Bless his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Greg Marilla. I'm excited. I always feel honored. I feel privileged when you decide to watch these videos. Praise the Lord. Amen. This uh, month, uh, we started a new series, uh, and the name of the series is A New Sense of Purpose. A new sense of purpose. Praise the Lord. And I would like us, before we start sharing and teaching the Word of God, I want us to open up by going to God in prayer. Amen. So let's do that. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and put our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And let's pray. Gracious Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we thank you. For helping us to press on. Praise the Lord. Father we thank you. For it is the Holy Spirit. Who helps us keep and maintain. The right mental attitude that you want us to have. Allow us to practice self control. Allow us to e exhibit endurance. Oh what a word that we need in our life. And we surely need it. Endurance. Praise the Lord. And teach us how to keep our eyes on your son, Jesus. And then we'll be able to finish the race and keep our faith. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say, amen, amen, amen. Let's give God a wonderful applause like we normally do. Praise the Lord. And let's surrender to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Well, I would like us to open up our Bibles, to Jeremiah 29, 11. Praise God. Uh, scripture, this verse, I call it a key to discover God's plan. This is a key. Jeremiah 29, 11 is a key that will open up the door for me to discover God's plan in my life. And, it's, and the Bible reads like this. As soon as I get there, I'll be able to read it. Praise the Lord. The Bible reads. The Bible says. Amen. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 29. Praise the Lord. And we're going to verse 11. The Bible reads like this. In verse 11, for I know the plans. See, there are more than one plan. There's more than one plan. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans. Plans for good and not for disaster. Not for bad. To give you a future and a hope. Praise the Lord. And I love verse 12. Just to encourage you, out of the New Living Translation, look what he says. In those days when you pray, I will listen. I will listen. So God is listening to our prayer. God's listening to our petition. Praise the Lord. And obviously God wants us to understand that he has a plan that is going to bless us, prosper us. And this plan is not going to be a disaster for us. It's not going to be harmful for us. I wonder why God would say that he has a plan that is good. And even though you feel it's hard to go through that plan, that's what he meant by disaster. You may think it's hard, the process, but the process is not really hard. Allow the process to progress to take you to the place where I need to take you. Praise the Lord. Progressive process. Praise God. And when you walk that path called, write that down, progressive process, then you'll discover God's plan for you and for me when I do that. The problem with us humans is that we feel that we have to be in control. Progressive process. 
We feel that we need to be in control. And when we are in control, we don't, when we lean on our own understanding and we don't acknowledge God, that's when we drift away. The drifting come in, praise the Lord. And we start drifting. And I wonder why we drift. We drift because we don't have a clear objective for our life. We really don't know what's the plan for our life. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So now that we discover his plan for us, now we need to develop it. Praise the Lord. Discover the plan, you develop the plan. You discover his plan, now you develop, you work with him, so the plan can be developed, praise the Lord. There has to be development in the plan. Through the process, there have to be development, praise God. And how do you do that? How do you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to develop? See, he needs your part participation, excuse me. So how do you do that? Well, <clears throat> by examining the pattern. Who is the pattern? Jesus is the pattern. Jesus is the model. Praise God. So that's, how, that's what you say. Well, <clears throat> let me find out how Jesus will handle this situation. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Praise the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. That's the New Testament. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, we're going to read. <clears throat> and when you're there, just give me an amen. amen. Wonderful. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that is so easily trips us up. <clears throat> then this is a key here that he gave me and showed me. He said, let us run with endurance the race of God. The race God, watch this, has set before us. So the, write this down, family. The Christian life is a race. The Christian life is a race. And he's not telling us in this Christian life to mark the course out. No, because the, the course has already been marked out for you. Look what he says. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. It's already set. He's got a plan for us. Praise the Lord. We, we don't have to rearrange this plan. We don't have to set another course. And that's when we get in trouble. That's when we drift away. When we set a course that is not the course that God wants us to be in. Praise the Lord. All right? Now, this is what you and I need to do. Please write this down. You and I need to only run the race. Praise the Lord, somebody. That's what you and I need to do. We just need to run the race. Run the race. We don't need to, okay, I'm going to uh, sit down and, and plan it out. I'm going to run this race, and I'm going to run it this way. <clears throat> No. Or a sprint. It's a long distance marathon. Praise the Lord. So you're not going to, you know, you're not going to make this race in a day or in or five years. This is a long distance marathon. Praise the Lord. You just need to run the race. Praise the Lord. And with that said, 
I'd like us to go to 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, that is. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 24. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Yes, sir. Praise God. 9.24. When you're there, you give me an amen, and I'll give you an amen, because I'm there too. And it says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs? See? What do you need to do and I need to do? We need to run the race. Yeah. Okay? So you need to run the race. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. But only one person gets the prize. So run to win. In other words, the purpose of you running this race is for you to run to win. That's very powerful right there. You need to run to win. All right? You don't run to quit. You're running today to race, and then you say, I'm I'm a little tired of this race. I think I'm going to take a break of it. I'm going to take a break from this race. I'm going to sit down. In other words, what you're really saying is, I'm going to drift away a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to drift away. No. This Christian life is compared to a race. So you, you need to run the race and run it to win. Because it's already been set before you. You are a winner already. You just need to stay in the race. Praise the Lord. Amen. In verse 25, it says, All athletes are disciplined in their training. Write that down. I need to stay disciplined. In my training. You need to. Every time you come to the house of the Lord. Praise God. God is cal calibrating you. He's disciplining you. Praise the Lord. So that you can hear him better. Praise God. Remember what we. What we heard Jesus say. <clears throat> that the words that he speaks to us. Is spirit and life. So when you spend time meditating in God's word, what you're doing is reviving your life. Praise the Lord. Okay? If there's anything broken in your life, that word repairs it. That word restores it. And that word renews it. You hear that? It's got to be repaired first before there be any restoration. You can't have restoration without repair. Are you listening, class? There has to be a repair. So write those three words, words down. Repair, restore, and renew. Praise the Lord. Because you can't fade away. You're not supposed to fade away. Praise the Lord. You're running with a purpose. Praise God. Amen? You're running with a purpose. The reason why you're in this race, you don't even have to say, why am I in this race? You're in this race. This race is important. This race is going to build character. This race is going to bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you need only to run the race. Don't stop to analyze the race. Run this long race. Run this wrong, long race. Just say, thank you, God, that you have chosen me to run this long race. Praise the Lord. You know very well that those to be around you are not around you anymore. You are running the race. Some of them have some of them has been left behind. Some of them has passed you. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that you are running the race. 
And now you need to do something. You need to throw off everything that hinders you. Get it out of your way so that you won't be stopped in this race. This long marathon, praise the Lord. So throw off everything that hinders you and get it out of your way, praise the Lord. You don't need it. Remember, verse 26 tells us that we're running with a purpose and every step, and every step you are running with a purpose. That means when you put your left foot forward, there's a purpose to that. When you put your right foot forward, there's a purpose to that. When you put one, two forward, there's a purpose. <clears throat> you're disciplining. You're being disciplined and you're being trained for this race as you run it. Praise the Lord. And you're just not shadow boxing. You're just not punching. You're just not clenching your fist and punching it in, in the air, hitting nothing. No, you're hitting a mark. Every time you concentrate and just run the race like you've been called to do. Praise the Lord. Now, whatever is hindering you, you need to take it off of you right now in Jesus' name. And allow the Holy Spirit to do that. Praise God. That way you can stay and remain faithful. Praise God. That's the key right there. You have to remain faithful. If you don't remain faithful... You won't be able to run this race. Don't allow your mind to speak foolishness to you. And then you drift away. I'll show you a scripture that will help us out. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, please. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, excuse me. 2 Timothy chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 7. 4-7, that is. It says, Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have remained faithful. And then he says in verse 8, And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, who's judging this race? God. Will give me on the day of his return. And the price is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. Praise the Lord. So the key here is for you to remain faithful in this race. Faithful in the race. Praise God. Faithful in the race. When you are faithful, it will allow you to have perseverance and endurance. Faithfulness will allow you to have perseverance and endurance. Praise the Lord. Faithfulness. 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 Praise God, somebody. Okay? Now watch this. Go to Philippians. Philippians. Uh boy. Philippians, the book of go to the book of Philippians chapter two. Go to Philippians chapter two. And once I'm there, I'm gonna let you know where to go. Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two. Thank you, Lord. Verse 16, I got it. Philippians 2 16. Praise God. Remain faithful. Remain faithful. Stop being so unfaithful. Thank God that he's faithful even when we're not. Thank God that God is faithful even when we're not. Praise the Lord. So you have to remain, Philippians 2.16, you have to remain faithful. Now in Philippians chapter 2 verse 16 says, hold firmly to the word of life. Then I... Uh, Run the race in work was not useless. Are you listening to me, class? What you're doing, it shouldn't be useless. 
And you shouldn't feel that it's useless. Amen? You have to hold on firmly to what what been taught, what you have been taught, what has been shared to you. You need to hold on firmly to it until the day of Christ's return. And then he will be proud that you did not run this race in vain. See? We, if, if we start something and we don't complete it, guess what? It's in vain. It's in vain. So we need to run with a purpose. Praise the Lord. A purpose. We need to run with a purpose. So write this word down. I need perseverance and endurance. Why do you need perseverance and endurance, Pastor? Well, because God wants you to finish the race. But it's not when you say the race is over, he'll let you know when the race is over. Fulfill your purpose in the race. That's when the race is over. Amen. Praise the Lord. He wants you. He wants to be proud of you. So don't you think that you're running this race in vain. Don't think that what you're doing, ah, this is useless. I don't see nothing good coming out of this. Bite your tongue. Don't say that. Your plans are not not your plans. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Praise the Lord. All right? So I suggest this, if you really want to run with perseverance and endurance to finish the race, the only way you can do that, write this down please, this is a key that's going to help you, you're going to have to fix your eyes on Jesus. When you fix your life, I like saying this, lock your eyes on Jesus. When you lock your eyes on Jesus, and nothing else matter, oh man, you're going to be blessed. You are going to be blessed. Amen. You will overcome, praise the Lord. But if you take your eyes off Jesus for any length of time, you know what happens? It's in vain. What you did, what you did before now becomes useless. Are you listening to me, class? Because when you take your eyes off the Lord, you know what happens? You lose your ability to run successfully. See, this is the key right here. You, as you persevere and you keep your eyes on Christ, you will be successful. I'm telling you, that's the word of God right there. I'm sorry how you feel. I'm sorry what you think. I'm reading the word and the word tells me the truth and what you feel and think don't mean diddly squat to me. You heard me say it. Praise the Lord, somebody. See, I believe the word over what man believe. See, the word telling me if I keep my eyes on Christ, if I just persevere and keep running this race, fix my eyes, lock my eyes on the Lord, I'll be successful. I had to be successful. Because if I'm locking my eyes on Jesus, Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. So if anybody's going to be able to help me, it's going to be Jesus. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, when you lock your eyes on Jesus, he will set all things in motion. Praise the Lord. In motion. See? Just like I heard that, that man testify. He wanted so much for his van, and Jesus turned around and gave him so much more. So he wasn't, you see, what he wanted wasn't really justifying himself. It wasn't really helping him in the race. But, but the Lord Jesus Christ said, no, son, you work for me. I need to pay you this. Somebody say amen. And gave him what Jesus felt he deserved. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the way it is. But why? Because that man, he locked his eyes on Jesus. When he first tried to sell it, somebody tried to uh, 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 fool him and trick him and give him a, a price that he wasn't uh, comfortable with. And he said, no, I'm not doing that. Now, de- oh, praise you, Father. You know, 
impatient could have came in. Desperate could have come in. But he didn't give in to them. He didn't give in to, I'm desperate. Listen, listen, class, you need to listen. He didn't give in to, I'm desperate. I'm impatient. I think I'm broke. He didn't give in to that. Because he had his eyes locked on Jesus. Praise the Lord. He recognized the author of his faith. And he knew, and I know, and you know, that whatever Jesus start, he will complete. Praise the Lord. Write it down. He will complete it. Jesus is the perfecter. Praise God. He's the perfecter. He's in the business of perfecting. He takes your mess and cleans it up. He repairs it. He restores it. He renews it. And then he makes a miracle out of it. And then you, then you, have, you have the right to go around saying, look, from mess to masterpiece. That sounds like a miracle to me. And then after a while, you, you'll understand, well, you know what? I can live the life, the blessing life. I can live the life, the blessed life. I can live it. I love miracles. But you know that when a miracle comes, it's for you to believe. For those that don't believe, they need to see a miracle. He, he says in, in the Bible that he showed his way to Moses. And his act to the people. See that? He showed his ways to Moses. He spoke to Moses. Moses, this is the way I want you to live. Now I'm going to do some miracles in here so they can believe us and follow us. Somebody say praise the Lord in here. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? So Jesus is the perfecter. We said, write it down. We said boldly here from this pulpit that Jesus started it. And if Jesus started it, Jesus is going to complete it. If Jesus started it, he's going to complete it. So don't get out of the race. Don't, don't get out. Don't stop. Don't slow down to, to window shop. Stop window shopping. There's a time to go window shopping and there's a time not to. Right now, your, your time is to Concentrate and run the race. Okay. Go to Psalm 33. Go to Psalm. Psalm 33, please. In the book of Psalms. Psalm 33. In the Old Testament. Psalm 33. Praise the Lord. Psalm 33. And... Let me go there and then I can tell you what verse. Psalm 33, I'm there. Psalm 33. Okay, verse 13. You're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. Psalm 33, verse 13. Praise the Lord. I hear you, Lord, loud and clear. Thank you, Father. I will do. Praise God. Psalm 33, verse 13. It says like this in the translation. The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. <laughs> Tell me you're not in a race. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. And from his throne, he observed all who live on the earth. He made their heart so he understands everything they do. Praise the Lord. All right. So if, if, if Father God is the one watching over this race, you need to run it and allow God's grace to take over your life. You hear me? Because without his grace, you won't be... You won't be able to run the race. Write it down. Without God's grace, I really won't be able to run this race. So if God is looking at, looking at me from heaven, that means he's sending down grace 
so that I can run this race. Praise the Lord. He's the perfecter. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. That means that whatever he starts, he will finish. Whatever he starts, he will finish. Praise the Lord. So in Galatians, let's go to Galatians now. Galatians chapter 5 in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Uh, verse 7. Please go there. When you're there, say amen. No, better yet, when you're there, say this with me. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Come on, say it. It's a temple of the Holy Spirit. So I need to take care of my body. If my body is the house of the Holy Spirit, who give me the right to mess up my body? Praise the Lord. Okay, you there? Verse 7, Galatians 5, 7. You were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? See? So when, when you get held back or left back behind and everybody else is passing you that is running the race, Someone's telling you, son, it could be yourself, that is not true. Because the truth is, you should be in this race. You should be running this race, praise the Lord. Because Father God is never going to start anything that he's not capable of finishing. Oh, did you hear that? Father God is not going to start something, or Father God will never start anything he's not capable of finishing. So that means that if, if Father God, Jesus, started us on this race, he's going to enable us to finish it. You're not hearing me. He's going to enable us to finish it. Remember, key here, the key here is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Praise the Lord. The moment you take your eyes off Jesus, now you're drifting. Now you're drifting with the wind, all right? It could be a ha- it could be the, uh, because something caught your attention, the habit of this world, the fashion of this world, whatever it is, caught your attention. And now you're allowing yourself to be drift away because you took your eyes off of him. Praise the Lord. Now, I said before, Jesus is the one that sets all things in motion. So that means Jesus, write this down, Jesus is and he is and always will be your motivation. He's my motivation, he's your motivation. And we have to understand this. For us to be able to enter into it, this race, if I'm going to run this race with Jesus, I have to understand that he's the one who motivates me. Praise the Lord. My motivation comes from Jesus. Because he's the one that set all things in motion. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord. And If I'm not running with the motivator. Are you listening to me class? If I'm not running with him. That means that I will lose the race. Because the race will become too much for me. Now, I know some of you know what I'm talking about. When the race becomes too much for you, that means you have taken your eyes off the Lord. No good. It's too much. I feel too much pressure. That means your your eyes are off the Lord and they're on your situation. That means literally what I'm saying is you have just stopped in the race or maybe slow down and you're window shopping. Have you ever gone window shopping? Have you ever gone one? Some, sometimes you stop at a window and you look at the things or the mannequin, whatever, the clothing or the furniture, and you say, I don't like that. 
Well, then keep on going. Nobody tell you to camp, camp, and camp in front of that window. Are you listening to me, class? And that's how life is. You encamp in front of that situation. And that's all you're talking about. That window that is in front of you. Oh, somebody help me. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if you keep your eyes on him who set all things in motion, that means you should be moving. You should be moving. You should be moving. You should be on the go. Come on, somebody. And don't let nobody stop you when you're on the go. You need to do things. You need to, you need to use your abilities. You need to be using your treasure. You need to be using your time wisely. That means run the race. Praise the Lord. Run the race. Praise the Lord. He's your motivator. Where do you get your motivation from? Jesus. And when I don't understand that, what happens? The race becomes too hard for me. Because now life is on me. The weight of life is on me. Pressure of people. He don't like me. She don't like me. Who cares? Keep running this race. Praise the Lord, somebody. Who cares who likes you, who don't like you? As long as Jesus likes you and loves you, that's all that matters. Give me a big amen. Praise God. That's all that matters. Okay? Go to Hebrews chapter 10, please. Hebrews chapter 10. Let, let's get some scriptures here that will help us understand this teaching that we're sharing today with you better. Praise God. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Uh, 10. And go to verse 5, please. Verse 5. And we'll read 5 and whatever else he wants me to read. He said in verse 5, Hebrews 10, verse 5, This is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifice or sin offering, but you off, but you have given me to a body to offer. Wow. You were not pleased with burnt offering or other offering for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God. As is written about me in the scripture, first Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifice or sin offering or burnt offerings or other offering for sin. You were pleased with them through, though they, they are required by the law of Moses, Verse 9, then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He canceled the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. Praise the Lord. Verse 10, this is it. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Praise the Lord. All right? So who's your motivator? Who's the motivation? <laughs> I know that word ain't right. Well, where does our motivation come from? Jesus. All right? Not from any distra other distraction. Jesus. Jesus is your main attraction. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Jesus is your main attraction. Jesus. So, with that, I want you to write down, Jesus is supreme Motivator. Hallelujah. Jesus is the supreme motivator. And he came to do the will of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus. 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 Praise God. I said Jesus. Praise the Lord. Not whatever you, not your job, not my job. Praise the Lord. Not my ability, not your ability. Not what you understand that you can do. Not what I understand what I can do. It's Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right? Jesus. Now watch. Let's go to Psalm 37. Because of time, we've got to hurry up now. Psalm 37, please. Psalm 37. Hmm. Psalm 37. Father, help me here. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. 
uh, go to verse 4. So in, in Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart desire. See, you're not running this race in vain. All right? Praise the Lord. Um, I, I have to tell you. Wow, because of time. This is, this is a requirement. For successfully completing the race. Let me, let me tell you the requirement. Write it down once again. Having your eyes fixed is a requirement. You hear me? For you to uh, uh, successfully complete the race. I didn't say win because you already won the race. Praise the Lord, somebody. You already won the race. The race is fixed. You already won it. Now you have to complete it. And you have to complete it successfully. Praise the Lord. You hear me? Well, okay. And then when we get back again, praise the Lord. Um, I'll give you another three or four more uh, keys to that, that you're going to need to be able to finish this race. All right? So, viewers, I want to thank you for tuning in and, and, and uh, hearing uh, and receiving, and now you're going to apply what we share from this pulpit to wherever you at. Um, and remember, folks, <laughs> keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ because he is Lord. Amen. We'll see you real soon.